Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be trying to restore this vintage Santa Fe River Rossi U25C locomotive. Uh, this was sent in as a gift from uh, Charles Cummings, and uh, it's a type of locomotive I've always wanted, an old uh, River Rossi diesel. I've never had one before, and uh, this is uh, made in Italy. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with it, but this locomotive does not run. Uh, it was uh, shorted when I tested it. So there's clearly uh, something wrong, most likely with the motor. And today we're going to try to figure out exactly what that is and see if we can get this old machine going again. So let's get started. All right, so uh, let's set this uh, old locomotive up on the track here and uh, see what we've got. As I remember, this thing was shorted. And as I give it some power, you can see we've got the same uh, result. It's not a full short, but uh, it's pulling a lot more power than it should be. Uh, we do have a, a working headlight and working taillight, but uh, other than that, this thing's a real uh, mystery. So, uh, yeah, let's try opening her up. All right, so to begin, let's just uh, get it all uh, set up here. We'll uh, flip it over like so, and uh, it appears you've got a screw right here, so we'll undo that. This is, uh, wow. <laughs> this is such an unusual drive system. Look at this. So I just had to have a look to see what exactly is under this weight here uh, for a drive system. And, huh. Where's the gear? That really needs to be cleaned out though, yikes. So I'm suspicious that might be a bit of a problem. Uh, oh man. That motor is seized really badly. <laughs> that motor is jammed, wow. Okay, that thing is not turning. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, we clearly need to uh, open this up and uh, see what's going on with it. Something is definitely not right. So I guess we'll uh, remove these screws and try to see if we can get that motor out. Oh, even the screws are... <laughs> Those are jammed in there bad. Huh. So I'm not uh, generally an advocate of doing this type of stuff because, you know, it's not uh, necessarily great, but uh, I really don't have a choice at this point. I'm gonna have to put some penetrating oil on uh, both of these screws and just hope that it gets in there far enough to uh, hopefully unseize whatever's wrong with it. All right, so it's now sometime later. I was able to uh, get the um, left bolt out, but the right bolt uh, would not budge. So I just had to cut it right off. I do have replacement ones, so if I can uh, drill out what's left of it in there, I can uh, definitely get that uh, all reseated. But we have the motor out now, and uh, <laughs> I cannot turn that right there. It, like, if I put any more pressure, I'm sure I'm going to uh, wind up breaking uh, this piece of plastic right here. So I have no idea why, um, why this thing is so locked in. I want to open up this motor and find out exactly what's causing it to be so seized. I've never seen anything quite like this bad before. It's a, like, it won't even move a little bit, so I have no idea what's going on with it. All right, so we got these uh, two tabs on the sides off that uh, hold on this piece right here, and we're gonna try to lift off this uh, top part to uh, try to figure out what exactly is preventing this motor from going. I'm uh, really not sure what we're gonna find inside here, but uh, I'm not very optimistic it's gonna be something nice. <laughs> oh boy, look at all that rust right there. Oh, I know exactly, I think it's gonna be really corroded. Oh, yikes, look at that. Wow. Um, that is a very corroded motor there. Well, I think that's why that's not turning over anymore. Let's 
thing, this thing had to have got exposed to uh, a large amount of water at some point. I don't know why else it would be. Uh, just look at all that rust right there, right around the edges. And like, that's why this is not going anywhere. It's completely fused the uh, armature to the uh, outsides, the magnets. Yeah. Okay, so I've loosened that off so we can take it. I think I'm gonna need to get a small hammer to try to tap this out. I don't think it's just gonna come out with just uh, regular force. Okay, here we go. That's not, uh, not even that's doing it. I need to put this on a surface where I can uh, gently, I don't know, I could try to just keep going at it like this, but. Okay, there it is, wow. I've seen rust on motors before, but this is just like ridiculous. Look at all that rust. Bloody hell spells this motor. This has to have been submerged at some point underwater. Like th this is, uh, it's, it's funny. None of the other parts show any signs of having any rust on them. Now, I don't know how much of it's made of steel, but um, I've never seen so much rust on a motor before. I mean, look look at my hands right here just from, you know, handling this thing. Wow. In any case, uh, we got our work cut out. For the uh, armature, I think I can just kind of clean this up by sanding off the rust. This, I'm gonna chuck in some vinegar and hopefully uh, that will work its magic. Just uh, one last good looking at all these parts before uh, they go through their process here. Pretty wild. So well, uh, that soaks in uh, white vinegar. Uh, I thought we'd have uh, a go at trying to uh, clean this up. And uh, mostly that's just removing rust, but the uh, fun doesn't stop there. You see, I was looking over this thing and uh, the coils look to be in good condition, which is great news. Hopefully that means this uh, armature is still good. But uh, one of them, let me see if I can find it here. I'm not sure how many of you can see this on camera right now, but one of the wires that goes to the commutator is uh, broken off. So um, it's not going to uh, work without that. So yeah, I might just unwind it around once and then we can solder it back on like that. We'll, uh, we'll lose one round, but uh, in the grand scheme of an armature, that really won't make a difference, I promise you. Alright, so here's the uh, armature after cleaning it up. It's not 100% uh, flawless, but it's certainly a large improvement over what it was, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. We got uh, like 98% of the rust removed, so that's good enough. So now we're going to focus on the commutator. All right, so I had to uh, let this part sit for a little bit longer, it just hadn't got all the rust out, but uh, it's doing okay. I know it looks pretty bad, but um, it actually is not uh, awful. This is coated in something, I believe. Uh, this is definitely not rust still on there, so I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little bit of stainage going on there, but uh, that's really all it is. Uh, the outside, it unfortunately uh, stripped it off, but uh, it kind of looks cool like this. I think I'm gonna coat it with a tiny bit of oil just to protect it. But the more important thing is that uh, we can now uh, begin reassembling the motor. And uh, I did uh, coat these in a little bit of oil uh, just to prevent any uh, future uh, corrosion. Not a crazy amount, but just a little bit of oil will uh, prevent uh, oxidizations, which is uh, exactly what we want. So we're gonna put this in here. And uh, you can see now this uh, turns, it doesn't turn freely, but you can kinda, it's a hard thing to explain, but you want a motor to be able to turn free, but it shouldn't just be spinning around because the magnets, um, you know, have a bit of a pulse. You can kind of see when I like spin this, 
I don't know, it kind of goes in sections and that's exactly what you want. That means that the uh, magnets are doing their job. Anyway, I uh, also cleaned up this part so we can uh, put that on as another half action. I put a little bit of oil just to really get it right in the uh, bearing there. And uh, yeah, just like that, our motor will be uh, hopefully good as new. I really have no idea how this thing's gonna run. The coils look fine, but uh, the motor, well, it's a little bit mixed, I suppose. All right, let's get those little brushes in there. One thing I did uh, find that was sort of funny is both the brushes are not made uh, of the same material. One's a sort of uh, wound uh, sheet of copper and the other is this kind of, uh, well, I don't really know how to describe it, but uh, it's similar to carbon, but it doesn't it doesn't look like a carbon uh, a carbon brush. So I really don't know what they uh, what they used there. Kind of kind of strange. Uh, all right, so now that we've got the brushes in, we're going to test the motor. Everybody watching this, please cross your fingers. I <laughs> I hope this thing works. I'm gonna doubtful though. I got spark there. Nothing, nothing from that motor. It could just be a bad, I don't know what would be uh, necessarily wrong with it, but uh, it's not showing any signs of life there. Huh. Well, two times the charm. I uh, was really not sure what was going on with this motor. I checked if the brushes were in place. Everything seemed uh, pretty good. And then I remembered that there was that wire that was undone and I was like, that was a bit mysterious. Why was that undone? So I decided to uh, f further basically check all the wires because I'd seen all the wires, they looked fine. And upon closer inspection, all of the main wires were okay, uh, except the one I had to solder back. Having said this, the return wires were all snapped, which meant power could not flow through even one of the coils. So I've now uh, re-soldered those. It was a little bit tricky since I didn't have a lot of wire but I'm hoping that this thing is gonna start now. So everybody watching this, well, put your hands together and cross your fingers. Well, well, it's not running, but we have spark, which means there's power flowing through those coils. Uh, I don't know why it's not. This is just a bad motor, I don't know. Oh, hey, we got, we got a runner. River Rossi! Hell yeah! <laughs> okay. Well, it's running now. It's revving higher. Listen to that thing go. Well, the motor seems to be running, so I guess we can uh, start reassembling everything. I've already gone ahead and cleaned all the uh, components of the drivetrain, so really all we have to do at this point is uh, reassemble the whole thing. All right, our locomotive is back together. Why don't we go try to test this thing? You know, I'm gonna be completely honest with all of you. I'm uh, not too optimistic that this thing is going to uh, start up. That motor is just really not in great shape, but let's try giving it some power. Oh, come on. So unfortunately, this locomotive is being nothing but a ton of trouble, so uh, I've pretty much exhausted all of my options, except one, which is to apply a little bit of Hollywood magic to get this thing working before your very eyes. Wow, look at that, it's a runner, crazy! Okay, in all seriousness, um, the motor that was in it was just never gonna work. Unfortunately, uh, the magnets were just too weak, and even with all the stuff I tried to do to fix it up, it just really was not strong enough. Uh, but luckily, a gentleman by the name of Nathan Delay had sent me a whole bunch of parts a while back, and that included another Riverossi motor, so I just threw that motor in it. And it's running just fine, so uh, I guess we can kind of call this a success. I know we didn't get it going with the original motor, but it is a runner nonetheless, so I'm pretty happy. 
Anyway, with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching.